let's start our lesson today with a mind exercise, a brain exercise. Okay. So I'll be sharing, I will be, I'll, I will give you a few, few questions that is called trivia questions. Yeah. So are you ready guys? So you can drop your answers um, in the chat box and Mr. Tina will help me to uh, read the answers. Okay. Are you ready? Ready to say. Okay, good. Okay, let's go. So first, what is the capital city of Spain? A. Madrid. B. Barcelona. Madrid. Barcelona. Okay, coming. Madrid. Yes. A. Madrid. All right. Good. So let's look at the answer. Yes, it is A. Madrid. Good. Okay, next question. Where is ozone layer located? Ah, this is uh, calling for biology students. Oh, biology students. <laughs> Where is ozone layer located? A in stratosphere, B in troposphere. You must know that. A, okay, A, A, good. I comment A. A. Okay, let's look at the answer. What is the answer? Yay, correct. A in stratosphere. Okay, good. Next. Right, this calling for chess player. Who starts first in chess? A, black. B, white. Oh, good. Oh, okay, good. Right. Yes, correct. B, white. Okay, next. Okay, okay, good, good. <laughs> I'm Ashraf. Okay, good. Who created the world's first car? A, Henry Ford. B, Carl Benz. B, A, Henry Ford. B, Carl Benz. Ah. Oh, sorry. Oh, Okay, the answer is Carl Benz. Correct. Well done, guys. And last one. What is your body's largest organ? Uh, A, lungs. B, ski. Okay, good, good, everyone. Good, sitting here right now. I'm happy now. All right, good, good. Yes, the answer is B, skin. Okay, good. Wonderful. So I hope that um, you you are ready for the for the lesson today after the mind exercise, yeah, right. So um, before I begin my lesson, I would like to um, I would like to highlight that I am here just for um, I am here to share with you with uh, I'm, I am here I am sorry <laughs> I am here with you just to share. Uh, about some tips and techniques that um, I think might benefit um, all of us. So it's actually up to you um, to adopt and adapt um, according to your ability. So you can adopt and adapt uh, according to your ability, what you feel works best for you. Yeah. Okay. So today I will be sharing with you about writing an article. And what should you know about writing article? What should you know about writing article? So, um, firstly, you should know that article is, uh, is usually meant to be published, uh, whether it is a newspaper, whether it is a newspaper, magazine, or journal, or even article can also be found um, on Facebook, on blog posts, on website, right? So, um, and the purpose of writing an article is usually to inform to inform in an entertaining way that your reader, when reading your article, it, they feel that they are reading an article, not a research paper. Uh, okay, so it, so it should sound that your article should sound um, entertaining as well as informative. There is a balance between there is a balance between um, entertain, uh, entertaining and as well as uh, informative. We'll go to that part later. So. Be knowing that your article is published at newspaper, at magazine, so your audience, your target reader will range from 
young people from uh, people at your age, at your age to maybe your grandfather grandmother who are still maybe who are still reading newspaper or magazine right so knowing who is your audience so knowing who is your target reader it will decide your voice your tone uh, there is a specific tone on and voice um, that you should use when writing your article. So, uh, as mentioned here in the slide, okay, as mentioned here in the slide, okay, um, your tone of voice can be less formal, can be less formal, but maintain the, but still maintain the, the uh, formality of register, the formality of um, sentence structure. Uh, it can. But it can be less formal by getting the reader, uh, by by talk by getting the reader to talk to you. Uh, sorry, by getting you to talk to the reader. Uh, okay. So we will look at that later. All right. So uh, what is the what is the relation between what uh, we did just now with um, the lesson today? And so I would like to highlight that when writing article, you have to have um, certain or certain basic understanding, basic understanding on uh, the current issues that is happening around you, especially at school, particularly at school, around you as teenagers, uh, in your neighborhood, in your country, so that when you are writing an art when you are writing your article, you have something to bring to your article. Uh, do you have something to bring um, when writing in your article? Okay. So, uh, moving on to the next slide. So this is the, um, this is these are the things that I will cover today. So first one is um, I want to bring you to uh, the assessment criteria, and then um, we'll get familiar with the questions, and I'll share with you some tips and techniques. If um, and I hope if we get some time, uh, we'll look at a sample essay, All right? So. Are you ready, guys? Ready, sir. Yes. Okay. Yay. Good. Good. Okay. So, uh, before we begin, uh, before we begin, um, let me ask you a few questions, yeah, um, in relation to what uh, you have learned uh, previously with Sir Hazwan. So, the, how many parts are there in writing paper? Three. Three. All Three. right. Good, Putri Diana. Yes, good, Chai. Hello, Madam Sakina. Okay, it seems that, um, yeah, they're having some connection problems. So, let's just wait for the two teachers to come back, okay? <clears throat> so, in the meantime, students, can you write in the comment section which school are you from so I can get to know you better? I miss Nisa, by the way, from JPN Pera. So, if you could write your school name... Anybody from Manjung? 
Oh, SMK Kampung Jambu, Dr. Buharnuddin, Greek Raja Chulan. <coughs> SMK Sri Kota, Bersia. Bersia is in Greek, right? Mahat Almizan. Okay, good. Alright, Madam Sakina or Madam Su Miss Sutina, you guys there? Uh, yes, I am here. Uh, give us uh, a few minutes, okay, to right. get the line back. Okay, no worries. <laughs> it's, it's going to be here. Oh, oh, yeah. oh okay. SMA Tan Sri Ghazali Jawi. Wow. Convent Ipoh Tasisian Eva Maria Semke Bukit Merchu You guys are really from the whole of Perak <clears throat> Okay, so what's your target for um, SPM Bahasa English for your English paper? What's your target? <laughs> are you guys okay over there? Inshallah A plus. Okay. I was an English teacher as well, so uh, it's good uh, to score A for your English because it can get you to anywhere because most of the courses that you're going to apply to uni and you're applying for scholarship, uh, either JPA or BPG or Petronas or Mara, um, they definitely look at your pa English paper as well. So make sure you score the most in your writing part because it's the most important part, the triple one nine, CFR lines. Writing part is the most important part. Okay, Madam Sakina, are you ready? The microphone is off. I'm so okay. sorry, everyone, because it looks like it's going to rain here. When when this happened, usually we will break. Uh, it's okay. Anything happens, I'll cover you. <laughs> All right, thank you. Okay. okay. Oh, where were we just now? Uh, right, okay. Okay. So, just now uh, I mentioned that uh, each part carry 20 marks, right? All right. And, um, and it is, um, if, um, sorry, uh, there must be a case, yeah, there must be a case. So, uh, if you ever, if, if this have ever, ever happened to you, when um, you actually score well in part one, okay, you score full marks in part one and part two, yeah, you, you score all 20 marks for part one and all 20 marks for part two. But uh, in part three, you only manage to get five, for example, uh, five, four, three, three, for example, uh, only um, 16 marks, 15 marks, and you are wondering why. You ingat macam teacher kena code nak bagi markah kan? Uh, okay, sebenarnya, you, uh, actually, this is what you have to know. This is what you have to understand, yeah? If you look here, if you, as you can see here, the red, the red, the red box here, it represents, um, it represents the, it represents task one, yeah? The, the band where uh, you should be, you should be, you should, you, you are going to be placed. It is between A1 and B1. Whereas, as compared to part three, this is where you are. You are sitting in between B1 and C1. What does that mean? So that means um, each part has different level of difficulties. And that's why it has different level of requirement. Uh, and that's why you can see part one, you only have to write like 80 words. And you, 80 words and you are allowed, and you can achieve that only by uh, using simple sentence, basic vocabulary, basic vocabulary, uh, everyday vocabulary. Um, and that entitle, entitle you to be at, uh, entitle you to get full marks. Whereas in part three, it is more challenging. It is more challenging and the requirement of the task also um, challenging. It require a, a certain degree of complexity in your piece of writing. And that is why, as you can see here, if you are aiming for 555, five, five, getting 555 five, five here in part three means that you are, it is equivalent to C1. Uh, so it is, um, 
it is high. Uh, it, I, I would say it is uh, quite challenging. But then, don't feel demotivated. Okay, don't feel demotivated. And so, it's macam, eh, susahnya ke nak dapat kat sini? No, tak. It's just a matter of practice. Uh, it's just a matter of improving certain parts in your writing that that uh, match the requirement of the task. Okay, so that brings us to the assessment criteria here. Okay, I would like to highlight what are the things that should evident in your writing in order for you to get five marks, also in order to, in order for you to get full marks. So, each element here, content, CCA, communicative achievement, organization, and language, um, all contributes to 20 marks. So this one, uh, content is five, CA is five marks, organization is five marks, and language is five marks. So this is uh, band five that we are looking at, yeah? So you have to make sure, in order to get five for content, you have to just make sure that this is the easiest one. Yeah, you have to make sure that um, all the questions uh, prompted in the essay, or on the, in the rubric, is, um, is a, uh, so, all the question is attempted. Uh, so you you make sure that your target reader is fully informed. Uh, Bendik kata dia, you answer, you you jawab semua soalan. Uh, make sure that kalau dia nak evidence, sorry, kalau dia, if you want, if the question wants you to give advantage, then you give advantage. One advantage. If the question wants you to give advantages, then give one, more than one advantages. Uh, okay, so make sure that your target reader is fully informed here. Okay, fully informed as well as relevant to the topic. Whereas for communicative achievement, there is a certain conventions or what we say, uh, what we call um, a style, a tone, style and tone and also register um, that you have to achieve uh, in order for the, in order for, in order for you to hold the target reader's attention. Uh, so there is a certain there is a certain tone style and register that should suit the writing gen genre. So let's say you are writing an article, your article should sound like an article, and it is it, it should engage the readers. Uh, so by how by 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 holding the attention readers, meaning that your um, essay is smooth, uh, is smooth. Your readers can follow your thoughts, can follow your thoughts without disrupt without distractions uh, particularly because of errors lah kan uh, kita punya distractions in essay usually because of errors and um linkers uh, linkers okay and that brings us and that brings us to the organization here so organization you must make sure that your text is well organized well organized using coherent and variety of cohesive devices and it most importantly is effective, uh, effective. Uh, so you must make sure that your, your um, cohesive de devices not only um, sebab you want one or two to appear in your text. Uh, so ada satu, ada dua, tu cukup lah. No, no, no. It's not, it's not like that. You must make sure that your cohesive devices signal, um, signal, um, correct, correct, um, Centers, signal correct, signal your ideas, okay? All right, and the last one is um, the language, okay? The language, you have to make sure that uh, you must be able to use some less common lexis, ataupun kita panggil bombastic vocabulary, uh, okay? But use the, the, the vocabulary appropriately, mesti appropriate. Uh, jangan semata-mata you want to sound bombastic but it doesn't fit the context, uh, okay? And then uh, you must be, also must be able to use a variety of simple as well complex. It does not mean that simple to, um, does not mean simple to, um, tak ada markah, simple to sometimes it has effect, yeah? Uh, so you have to have a variety of simple and also complex grammatical forms flexibly, uh, okay? And as, uh, and I think uh, this one, this one, uh, it must be evident lah. You must uh, avoid doing mistakes or, or error, okay? All right. So I hope that that clear, that is clear to you, yeah? 
next. Right. Let's get familiar with the question. Okay. All right, good. Uh, okay. So this is um, an example, some examples of questions. Um, some example, I will be showing you some example of questions. So I think uh, we teachers love to see scribble question paper. We will love to see notes on your question paper. We don't want to see an empty question paper. So what is important is whenever you write, whenever you read the, uh, the rubric, it's important for you to have at least a lighter or uh, a colored pen and make some notes on, um, make some notes on the important things that should, uh, evident that should be in your writing. So the first one, Okay, the first one, this one, articles wanted. So what does this tell you? What does this tell you? Ni bagi tahu you apa articles wanted ni. That we need to do article. Yes, okay, you need to do article. It means that there is, um, there is a certain format that you have to follow when you're writing an article, okay? Next. So you 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 will not miss you will not uh silap nanti buat report pula kan uh, so you know that it is article right so this tells you the writing genre good next littering problems what is this the title of our article good the title the title of the article as well as the topic of uh, of your content a content, what, what is the content that you are going to write about in your um, article? Good. Okay, good. Next. What is this? Points. Yes. Questions. Okay, questions. Um, when you interpret it into um, response, into essay, what, what, what does this mean? We want to answer these questions. Why? Good, good. Okay, good. Syahidah tu, good. Megi busuk. Yes, it is content. Uh, content. Maksudnya key points. What are the things, what are the things that you have to discuss about uh, so that you tak go of, that, that, so that you tak go uh, overboard, uh, tak go beyond daripada topik. Uh, okay, so this is actually serve as a guide lah for you when you are writing. So good. This is key points. And Remember, baca sampai habis. Read until the end tu. Jangan baca sampai questions tu and then happy dah. So what is next? Who can tell me? What is next? What is the last point that is important? Uh, write an article answering all the questions. Uh -huh. Not quite right. Okay. Well, okay. Ong Shen Kip. So where do, how do you know your target audience? Where, 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 Publish. where, where? Publish in newspaper. Good, yes. Publish in newspaper. You have to know that this is, this article is going to be published on a newspaper. So who is your target reader? Public, right? It can be yes. anyone, right? Ah, okay. So that tells you what kind of tone and voice. Uh, so that tells you what kind, how, uh, how tone, and, tone and voice and how it makes you think, how can I attract my reader to read my article on this paper? Uh, macam tu, yeah? All right. Okay, so let's test your memory here. Uh, kita test memory. So what is A there? You see this notice on the board outside the school library? A, articles wanted. So what is A just now? Genre, good. Yeah, Shahidah told, good. It is um, the writing genre. Okay, B, my school, sorry, my school canteen. Topic, good. Topic, yeah, topic or title of the article. Okay, good. C, what are types of food? Content. Yes, good. Content, key points. Yes, good. Sophia, I did. Yes, good. You're doing good there. Eh? All right. And then last one, school magazine. Target yes, writing. good. Okwan, Okwan, uh, Siti Aisha, yes, good. Uh, school magazine uh, tells you who your target reader, target audience is, target reader is, yeah? 
Next, ah uh, ni I jumble up the 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 alphabet here the the alphabet here ah uh, see whether you can remember. So C, what is C? Articles wanted C. Articles wanted. Gender. Okay, good genre. Okay, what is A here? A. What can you do? Content. Yes, content. B, school Facebook page. Target, target audience. audience. Yes, target audience. And lastly, D, school award day. Topic. Target audience. Okay, topic. Good. All right. So now you have, uh, you are familiar with the, the, the question. So now I am here. So now I'll be moving on sharing with tips, some tips and techniques before, um, before I let you I let you show your ability to write an article, yeah? Okay. So, this is the um, mix, uh, the highlights of my, uh, the, out, the, the outline of um, the tips and techniques that I will cover. Right. So, the first one, okay, the first tip is, it is important to get your interpretations correct. Interpretations. Maksudnya cara you um, faham the, so the question is very important. Alright. Because you must remember CA just now. You must remember CA just now. You have to fulfill all the communicative purpose. Okay, what does that mean? All communicative purpose uh, uh, in article means that what or oh, why are you writing the article? What is the purpose of writing the article? Is it to inform? Is it to suggest opinion? Is it to tell? Uh, is it to explain? Is, explain cause and effect? Uh, so you have to 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 know what what is the purpose of writing the the essay because that will help your reader to um to understand your essay to understand your writing. So I would like to draw attention, uh, your attention to here. Uh, the key points here, the content here just now, eh, that we discussed just now. So why do people litter? So what is the purpose? Uh, so what, what, what does this question wants you to do? We want to inform littering public to the yes, public. Yes, public. Yes, okay. Uh, it should, uh, you should be able to inform or to tell reasons, to make justifications of why people litter, okay? And then what kind of problems does it create? So here you are telling the reader that you are going to to explain what? The content. The effect, okay, content, but the content is used to explain effects, okay, what kind of problems? So, what is the effects of littering just now, okay? Uh, so, to, uh, so the second question is to explain the effects. Next, how can we help to reduce litter? How can we help to reduce litter? So, this part of this part of uh, your writing will tell about ways. Yes, you are offering ways. You are offering alternative and suggestions on how to stop littering, how to, to overcome the problem. Yes. So by knowing this, by knowing, uh, by knowing the purpose, by knowing the purpose, by, by understanding the question, getting the interpretation correct, you will be able to Communicate the purpose through your audience. Uh, so your audience until bila you bila they read when they read your uh, article, they will know that oh okay this is uh, this part you are going to tell about why you are making justification you are making you are telling reasons okay and then another part will be uh, telling about uh, what kind of problems what are the effects of um, littering just now and then the last part you are offering some suggestions uh, okay so it helps the reader to follow your essay smoothly. Uh, itu in, that, uh, itulah importantnya uh, interpretation uh, interpretation so that you you can hold the reader's attention there. Okay? So this is the checklist. Uh, this The checklist that um, you might want to to refer when you as you read the question. So uh, I would like to highlight here lah the purpose. Uh, so whether to provide reasons or justifications, whether to explain advantages, 
disadvantages, benefits, drawbacks. Okay, whether you are asked to give opinion, or whether you are asked to illustrate examples. For example, the the question might ask you, what are the activities should be done during uh, award day, for example. Uh, so you are required to provide some examples there. Okay, so make sure that you get the interpretation correct. And another one is the tone. Okay, you have to know who your reader is. Right? Okay, so this is the article format. So the article for the article format typically, typically um, as seen in newspaper, as seen in magazine, you should have a, a what? The most important thing, you should have a Time and space. Sorry? Sorry, Nuri? Time. Time. Time? Time or title? Title. Ha, title. Okay, Nuri, good. Title, yeah? You should have a title. Typically, where, um, uh, um, article where they read in the magazine, even on the website, must have a title. Okay, as well as who is, write, who is writing the article. So you can write your name the author's name just below the article, all right? And then, uh, how many paragraphs should you have? How many paragraphs should you have? Is there any fixed number of paragraphs? Three to five. Okay, um, actually there is no specific numbers of paragraph, but it is suggested that um, you organize your paragraph according to the content just now. Okay, you might embed. It is it is not possible. Boleh jadi you embed some of the content in. Uh, you you combine or you you combine some uh, two contents in one paragraph. But make sure there is a flow. Uh, macam mana nak create flow tu? How how do you create the flow? Using the what? Who knows? How do you create the flow in your uh, essay? Linkers, correct. Saya dengar bunyi bisik-bisik. Okay. Linkers, right? Linkers or we call sentence connectors. Uh, we call linkers. So this is important. This is uh, that, yang, uh, that we call just now cohesive devices. Tadi tu. Uh, cohesive, cohesive devices uh, aka linkers aka sentence connectors. Sama lah tu. Okay, adik-beradik. Okay. So it is important, it is important that you use, if you use cohesive devices effectively. Uh, effectively, uh, as if, macam, as if you are on the road, you are on the road, uh, you want to turn into a simpang, you want to turn into a simpang, what should you do? You give a? You give a what? Signal. Good, good Vasan. Yes, you give a signal. So that is the, so why signal is important? What happens if you go into the street without giving signal? Ah. What happened? You might crash into another car, right? Or what happened if uh, you are going along the road but you, you, you did not read the signs? You did not read the signs. You just masuk je um, simpang yang ada tu. What happened? You will get lost, right? So that is the import. So this is uh, why cohesive devices. Yes, correct Hafiza. Readers will get clueless. That is the worst case lah. Readers nanti, um, readers will get clueless. Don't know where you are going. Cannot follow your thoughts. Uh, so that is why cohesive devices are very important in your essay. But do not use it uh, just um, do not use it merely to make it to 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 look that oh okay I'm using some cohesive devices you know eh bukan you have to make sure that cohesive devices is effective okay so help me to arrange the cohesive devices below according to its function okay I want you to just uh, tell me the colors I will click on the words okay moreover uh sorry. Moreover, blue, correct? Adding details, yeah. Moreover, it's a cohesive device that is used to, to add details. All right, regardless of X, 
regardless of x uh, regardless of x kalau uh, if in sentence uh, the number of sea animals die con die continues to increase regardless of variety uh, protection measures taken for example regardless of uh, so regardless of, of ni tells you what and Emphasis. Uh-huh. Emphasis. Spread. Or is it contrast? Or is it cause and effect? Okay, the correct one is, uh, yes, I did Daniel. Yes, regardless of X, tells you um, contradicting, um, contradicting things happen. Okay? Next. Not only what, sorry, Allah. Not only Y, but also X. Okay, I have accidentally clicked on it. So it is used to add details. What is on the other hand? Adding details. Oh, adding details. Are you sure? Contrast. Okay, actually on the other hand, yeah. On the other hand, signals contrast. Okay, good, good. Okay, good. Oh man, good Jenny, good. Okay, hands, hands. Cause and effect. Yes, good. Cause and effect. Yes, good. Cause and effect. Um, above all, sorry, above all, above all is used to emphasize. Um, most importantly. Yes, it's used to emphasize or to make an emphasis. Good, good, all right, good. So, thus is showing cause and effect as a result also showing cause, showing an effect. Yeah, showing an effect. Also, here is to add details, right? Okay, so I believe that at this point, I believe at this point, um, you have learned, you have, you have learned um, certain ways uh, in order to make sure that your paragraph is smooth, your paragraph, uh, your thoughts is smooth um, along the paragraph. So, be, I don't know whether you are familiar with hamburger technique, yeah? hamburger, bun, patty and um, salad, right? And then uh, maybe some of you familiar with TEE, -E, topic sentence, elaboration, explanation and example, okay. Whatever technique it is, with regard to uh, paragraph, it has only one same goal. Uh, this, the goal is to make sure that your reader can follow your um, thoughts. Right. So for me, I see my paragraph as um, traffic lights. Uh, because this is something that uh, I see every day whenever I go to school, whenever I go to school market. So I see this every day. So when uh, it's green, it means that I have to be ready. I have to make sure that my reader is uh, is is informed with what I am going to tell about in my paragraph. Uh, so it comes in a topic sentence. Uh, so this this is where I tell my main idea uh, of the paragraph. All right, and then once kita dah dah speed then okay kita nak slow pula. We have to go slow because this part is the most the crucial part where uh, you are going to tell supporting details. You are going to explain. You are going to discuss. Uh, so you have to go slow so that your readers can follow you. Uh, so you have to go slow here where you have to include, um, uh, where you have to elaborate and include explanations or include um, different perspective, uh, include, your, include your opinions or some examples. And don't forget, jangan pergi panjang sangat, don't forget to stop. Uh, you have to stop. Uh, so make a small conclusion of what, what is, uh, what you have been talking in, uh, in the paragraph. Uh, so this is how I see my paragraph. So whatever techniques that you, you are using, that's fine. Okay, use techniques that works best for you. Uh, okay. As long as you make sure that your target reader is well informed with your uh, 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 well informed, right? So, um, I would like to have one person. Uh, can you volunteer to read the sample here? I want a volunteer. 
Can someone raise hand or maybe raise hand? Okay, Amina, yes. Okay, we have a we have a, a participant there. Amina, turn on your mic and uh, read the text for me, for us. Okay, too. Okay, go ahead. Use traffic light transitions to create flow in your essay. Mm -hmm. Why do you refer, be it intention, intentionally or not, the reasons are plain simple. Some, way, some may say that there is no dust nearby. Instead of carrying the rubbish around, it is easier to leave it, leave it behind. Others on, on the other hand, either simply because they under, un, underestimate the effect of littering on environment. They believe that such small acts like throwing away cigarette butts or candy wrappers do not cause great harm to the environment. Although these reasons may sound some but reasonable to us, littering is definitely wrong. Littering does have consequences not only to the environment but also to our well-being. Okay, good Amina. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, as a reader, okay, as, as a reader, can you follow the thoughts here? Is the, is the, uh, are the ideas um, are the ideas gathered here easy to follow? Can you give it back? Yes. Okay. Tell me what what um, what helps you to understand the what helps you to understand the paragraph. Uh, tell me what helps you to understand the paragraph. What help? What helps you to fo uh, What helps you to follow the paragraph? The question. Okay. Yes. The use of question there. Good. Ah, the use of question there really plays important part there. Okay. Why do people litter? Okay. Be it intentionally or not, the reasons are plain simple. Okay. So here I am telling you. Um, the main ideas of what I am going to talk about in the paragraph. I'm using, I'm using direct questions here. So why do people litter? Be intentionally or not, the reasons are plain, simple. And then you continue with the elaboration. Uh, the one in yellow there, the one in yellow here is the elaboration. Some may say that there is no dustbin nearby. Okay, this is the first reason. Uh, some may say that there is no dustbin nearby. So an explanation of the reason, instead of carrying the rubbish around, it is easier to leave it behind. Ah, ni tadi, what happened? What happened when they think that there is no dustbin nearby? Instead of carrying the rubbish around, it's easier to leave it behind. Just biarkan saja di situ. Alright. Others, on the other hand, uh, dia bagi from uh, another angle pula. Others, on the other hand, Litter simply because they underestimate the impacts of littering on environment. So here, others on the other hand, you are, you are telling readers, you are telling your reader that, okay, wait, there is uh, another reason. Ada a different angle pula. Ada orang, uh, they underestimate the impacts of littering. Ingat macam, uh, because they believe that such small acts like throwing away cigarette butts or candy wrappers do not cause great harm to the environment. So, dah, dah berapa reason kat situ? How many reasons? Two, right? Okay, so there are two reasons there. So, it's enough actually. Cukup dah. So, because uh, the question only asks you what what are the reasons, right? Uh, so, what are the reasons? So, you uh, uh, just enough that you provide more than one. Okay? And then, uh, before you go into another paragraph, before you go uh, into another content, uh, you create a bridge then. Uh, creating a bridge. Kita stop but uh, kita, kita stop and then we are creating a bridge. 
Although these reasons may sound somewhat reasonable to us, littering is definitely wrong. Uh, so you are emphasizing your uh, opinion here. Littering does have consequences not only to the environment but also to our well-being. So this is the bridge. Ini yang saya kata bridge. Bridge tu jambatan. Okay. Jambatan. Belum roboh lagi ya. Okay. So littering does have consequences not only to the environment but also to our well-being. So the reader, now the reader is waiting. What 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 are you going to tell about um, in relation to uh, the environment and also well-being kita tadi? Okay. Ini baru kita masuk. Next paragraph. Uh, next paragraph. Can anyone read? Raise hand please. Pavi, sorry, Pavi train. Ah, Pavi train. Yes. yes. And on your mic. Yes. Sir. Okay. Good. Okay. Go ahead. There are multiple ways to fix the problem we have with littering. To begin with, the easiest way we start with you as education starts at home. Educate yourself and your family members on the correct way of solving problems. Most importantly, when you put your garbage or sack on the street to be collected, make sure that you are secure the rubbish within the trash can using a garbage bag. Also, always make sure that your trash cans have lids on, the, on them. Mm -hmm. Proper rubbish disposal management can reduce the risk of missing the truck or being thrown into the environment. Okay, good, Pavitra. Thank you very much. All right. So now that uh, after you have created the bridge, now you come to another paragraph. Okay. And again, you start your paragraph with a topic sentence. Okay. You should tell your uh, your readers that, okay, this is going, this is what I'm going to tell about in the next paragraph. Okay. So there are multiple ways to fix the problem we have with littering. Okay. Bila dah baca ni, so your reader know. Okay, you are going to tell multiple ways. You are going to tell ways to fix the problem. So first one, to begin with, the easiest way starts with you as education. Starts at home. Uh, so the first way, uh, the first way, dia guna perkataan apa? To begin with, you can, you can also replace it with uh, firstly. To begin with, the easier was, the easiest way starts with your, with you as education starts at home. And then go on explaining, okay, what? Uh, how, how uh, by educating you, yourself, uh, it can help to reduce littering. So educate yourself and your family members on the correct way of throwing rubbish. Uh, tang mana nak educate tu? Tang, cara untuk buang sampah. The correct way of throwing rubbish. So how? Macam mana nak buang sampah dengan betul? Uh, most importantly, so you make an emphasis, emphasis, uh, emphasis here, you emphasize. Most importantly, when you put your garbage outside on the street to be collected, make sure that you secure the rubbish feed, the rubbish within the trash can using a garbage bag. Uh, so you are telling, you are, uh, so kat sini you are giving examples. You are giving example on how. And then also always make sure that your trash cans have lids on them. Uh, so, yeah, so kat situ dah ada beberapa ways. Okay, ways yang pertama, uh, make sure that you secure the rubbish within the trash can. Next, uh, cara yang kedua, make sure that your trash cans have lids on them. Uh, okay, so, so far okay tak? Is it clear to you? Yes, teacher. Okay, good. Okay, and then, for the, uh, and then before you move on to the next paragraph, Put a, put a simple conclusion, a, a simple conclusion in relation to, in relation to what you have talked about in your paragraph just now. Proper rubbish disposal management can reduce the risk of missing the truck or being thrown into the environment. So tadi you dah bagi ways, you can close your paragraph by relating what is the effect of doing that. Uh, to put one, one way uh, to conclude, one way to make a conclusion. Uh, in your paragraph, right? So that, um, that is a flow lah, cantik flow, flow, flow your, your paragraph tu cantik jadinya. Okay? Right. 
So this is transitions. This is an explanation of transitions. So you should know that transitions help you to organize your thoughts. Okay. Okay. So now it's your turn. Um, it is. So um, can you try? Okay. Can you try to elaborate one of these points? Okay. Elaborate these points. What kind of problems does literary create? What kind of problems does literary create? Like just now, oh sorry, just now we are talking about uh, waste. And before that, we are talking about uh, reasons, right? Why do people litter? And okay, I so we have ended with a bridge here. Sorry. Okay, we have ended a bridge here, but actually uh, I skipped that part and, uh, and jumped into the last one, the last part. Because I want, I want you to do that part for me. Okay. Um, can you elaborate this? What kind of problems does littering create to our well-being? Littering causes the spread of disease. Or uh, can you give me an elaboration on why, uh, how littering affect us, uh, affect the environment? Mm. Okay, let's let's give us some time, maybe two to three minutes. If you are ready with your answer, just just raise your hand. Then, um, and then we will share your, your answer there. Okay, I want an elaboration. Create, uh, I want an elaboration. So try to write a paragraph of, uh, a paragraph explaining the, the problems is now. It's explaining the, the effects, the effects of literary. Buat macam ni. Use this as sample. How do you, how do you, uh, I want to see how you write your paragraph. Anyone wants to try? Those who are watching live stream can write your paragraph in the Telegram group, okay? How should you start? So, how should you start? From the beginning, um, from the beginning to to conclusion.
Anyone? Okay, Bahia Hayani. Okay, let me read your, let me read your, let me read your paragraph, yeah? Okay. Littering has the greatest potential to harm the environment, wildlife, and humans. Okay, good. It can be found floating at the surface, suspended in the water column, or on the bottom of almost all water bodies. Good. Okay. It is transported by rivers to the oceans, where it moves with the currents and is often eaten by birds and fish, concentrating toxic chemicals in their tissues and filling their stomachs, causing them to starve and forcing them to the brink of extinction. Wow. Okay. This is good. Okay. Okay, so um, let us break down the let us break down the paragraph into uh, main ideas, elaboration, and uh, conclusion here. Okay, littering has the greatest potential to harm the environment, wildlife, and humans. Okay, that is the main idea, yeah? So, uh, it tells the reader that you are going to tell about how, uh, what is the harm, what is the harm of um, littering to the, to the, um, makhluk-makhluk tadi tu, environment, wildlife, and humans, yeah? Okay, it can be found floating on the surface, okay, suspended in the water, called water column or on the bottom of almost all water bodies. Okay, this explains how, how, okay, how um, the, 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 the litters just now affect the uh, wildlife and human. Okay, it is transported by rivers to the ocean where it moves with the currents and is often eaten by birds and fish. Uh, okay, and, and more explanation on it and, con and concentrating toxic chemicals in their tissues and filling their stomachs, causing them to starve and forcing them to the brink of extinction. Okay, yang part last kali tu, it tells you about um, the effects of Littering, the effects of littering. Uh, tadi, tengah-tengah tu tadi, elaboration tu dia tell how. Uh, how the littering tu tadi uh, affect the environment. And last kali tu, effect dia. Okay, sekali tu dia cerita effect. Okay, good. Okay, next. People usually think that littering is only a small matter that shouldn't be taken serious at. Okay, good. In fact, Littering can cause pollution, such as smell pollution and water pollution. From where does the smell comes from? It comes from the litters that have been ignored for too long and from the leftovers. For water pollution, the litter that humans left can somehow blown by the wind to the ocean and cause water pollution. Okay. Okay, if we break down the paragraph, so people usually think that littering is only a small matter um, that shouldn't be taken serious at. In fact, littering can cause pollution such as smell pollution and water pollution. Okay, jauh sikit lah. Dia, dia tell main idea dia jauh sikit. Uh, dia ke dalam sikit. Dia bawa, in fact, littering can cause pollution such as smell pollution and water pollution. Uh, okay, so the, the, so you are, so there is when uh, the reader know, okay, you are going to tell about um, water and smell pollution. So from where does the smell comes from? It comes from the litters that have been ignored for too long. So you explain macam mana, um, macam mana terjadinya uh, smell pollution tu tadi. Um, it comes from the litters that have been ignored for too long and from the leftovers. Okay, for water pollution pula, the litter that humans left can somehow blown by the wind to the ocean and cause water pollution. Uh, cuma dia ada missing sikit conclusion dekat situ. Uh, how do you conclude this? Uh, tak apa, kita, kita tengok sample ya. We'll look at the sample here. Right. Okay, good ya. Yeah? Good. Thank you very much Nurbahia Hayani and Putri Diana Balkis. Thank you. You're doing good. Okay. So this is uh, my suggested answer lah. Um, litter affects the environment. When litters are thrown in the water, they pose a threat to the aquatic life. As the litters degrade 
The chemicals in the litters, which are known to be harmful, will be released into the water and, as a result, will potentially kill the marine life. Also, do you know that hundreds of sea turtles have died from digesting plastics? It is because they think they are consuming tasty jellyfish when really they are welcoming harmful substances into their digestive, sorry, into their digestive system. Isn't this bad? Uh, okay, so this is another way, lah, another way of, uh, of writing a paragraph. It, sh it should have a main idea. Most importantly, you should have the main idea here. And then it should tell us how litters need to be the subject. The subject here, litters affect the environment. So you tell the a uh, little bit of background there. So litters, when, when it is thrown into the water, they cause a threat to the aquatic life. Uh, as the litters degrade. Uh, so this is where it happens. Much when they happen, as the litters degrade, as the litters degrade, the chemicals in the litters, yeah, which are already known to be harmful, will be released into the water. Okay, and as a result, they're telling the results will potentially kill the marine life. Okay, and then you are adding another, another, another how here, another how. So also, do you know that hundreds of sea turtles have died digesting plastic? Okay, this is the use of question just now. Uh, this is the use of question. You are, you are inviting your reader to think with you. In order to get the answer. Actually, you, you know the answer, but you want the reader to think. Okay? It is because they think they are consuming tasty jellyfish, where really they are welcoming harmful substances into their digestive, digestive system. Uh, okay, and then you close your article with, isn't this bad? So you leave your, you leave your readers with a question to think further. Uh, okay? And then, next. Um, litters can also affect our health. They will become the breeding ground of bacteria and parasites. As a result, it will be easier for the harmful microbes to spread among us when animals and insects like flies and rats that come into contact with the contaminated litters. Sorry, wrong then. Okay. Cholera, for example, uh, this is where some of your basic knowledge, some, some of your knowledge about what is, uh, about issues, yeah, about issues come into, uh, come into play here. Yeah. So cholera, for example, is a disease resulted from consuming contaminated water or food. Uh, this disease will leave a person to be fatally ill if not well treated. Uh, okay, so you need another one. How? Uh, this is the main ideas. And then you continue with how the litters just now, the subject just now, affect the health. So you become the breeding ground of bacteria and parasites. And uh, you use the sentence connector here. As a result, it will be easier for the harmful microbes, microbes in study refer to bacteria and parasites here, to spread among us. When animals, so who brings the, uh, the, the microbe just now? Who transfer the microbe just now? Animal and insects. So in a way, dalam sentence ni dia nampak panjang. Okay, nampak panjang but with the use of sentence connectors and also linkers. And also linkers like um, when here. Okay, this is a subord subordinating conjunctions. Um, and then uh, when animals and insects like flies and rats come into contact with the contaminated eaters. Uh, nampak panjang but you can still follow with the, with the help of the uh, linkers just now. Okay. And then cholera, uh, for example. Okay, you are giving example here. Usually kalau kita explain, we will give an, uh, uh, one example. It's a disease. So you explain here, what is cholera? Cholera is a disease resulted from consuming contaminated water. Okay, and, um, and uh, you explain later that a person will, will be fatally ill if not well treated. Okay, so you conclude your paragraph here. Therefore, one must never underestimate the danger of littering to our health. Make a small conclusion. It can be, it can be an emphasis. And overseas, it can be uh, uh, another, uh, it can be in a form of question that 
um, provoke your readers to think more. So this is how you can engage your reader. So your reader tu dia tak akan bosan baca. Kadang-kadang dia akan jawab soalan, uh, sometimes dia akan baca uh, definition. So ada banyak-banyak warna-warni in your paragraph tu. Macam traffic light ni. Okay. Okay. Alright. So, so far so good everyone? Yes, teacher. Yes, okay, good. If you have um if you have any question just feel free to uh, to ask yeah. Because I might be going uh, I'm uh, uh, I'm afraid that I might be going too fast or I might um using some I might be using some terms that might be confusing to you. Okay? Teacher, can we read one more example? Oh, okay, there is another example there. Thank you for making an attempt. Sorry teacher, okay. I will answer you your question Harith later. So Nur Iman, our world becoming ugly because of environmental pollution. Pollution can also cause various health problems and other and other affects living creatures. If the pollution increases, animal species will be reduced even going extinct. Okay? We have to find solution for this problem. We have to find solution this problem for our children. Firstly, air pollution is caused by the emission of toxic gases from cars, factories and open burning. Nowadays, there are more and more vehicles on the road. Everybody has a uh, own car. That cars emit toxic cars. Okay. Um, so, if we break down, if we break down the paragraph, uh, uh, if we break down the paragraph, pollution can also cause various health problems and other affects living creatures. Okay. If the pollution increases, animal species will be reduced even going extinct. Okay, so the first one, the, 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 the sentence telling pollution can also cause various health problems and other affects living creatures is the main idea. And then followed by the explanation. If we let the pollution continue, lah, eh, animal species will be reduced. So animals, uh, species, animal will will extinct. We have to find solution. Uh, we have to find solution. Eh? Um, I think it can be it can be moved down dulu. Kita kita keep aside dulu. So, but we want to discuss more because you have more because you have more. Um, Content there. You are the idea lagi selepas-lepas tu. Okay. Uh, firstly, air pollution is caused by the emission of toxic gases from cars. Okay. Uh, I would buang firstly tu. Kita tambah next. Uh, because it is actually another idea. Another idea. Uh, air pollution is caused by the emission of toxic gases from cars, factories and open burning. Ha ha. Okay, nowadays there are more and more vehicles on the road. So every, uh, every because, because, okay, uh, that is the, the importance of linkers here. You can actually connect the sentence to tau. Okay, because everybody has their own car. Okay, that cars emit toxic cars, toxic cars, <laughs> emit toxic gases actually. Uh, okay, uh, so um, kita boleh susun balik tu, don't worry, kita boleh susun balik daripada the sentence tu untuk create uh, a more smooth uh, smooth paragraph but make sure it, make sure you you in your mind you you break down your paragraph apa nak bagi tahu dulu dan apa yang nak bagi tahu kemudian and then uh, apa dia last kali uh, tu paling penting tak apa it takes it takes time uh, practice makes perfect okay okay now uh, nak move nak move cepat cepat ni um, third one, the third tips is holding readers attention effectively. Okay, there are two ways, yeah, there are two ways uh, in which you can hold the readers attention effectively. Remember, you can now make sure that your readers engage with your writing. Baru ada interest value tu. Okay, first one is you have to avoid making errors. Okay, mistakes, if it occurs one or two, it is considered as sleep. Itu biasa kalau spelling, uh, you tertinggal as Kalau uh, past tense, kalau past tense you tertinggal, uh, for example you tertinggal uh, ED. Kalau sekali dua, it's okay, it's considered as slip. But if it happens throughout the essay, 
um, repeatedly it becomes an error. When it becomes an error, it distract the reader. Dia akan distract the reader. So bila distract the reader, reader rasa macam terganggu lah sikit nak baca. Uh, so dia dah ada, um, dah low sikit awak punya your interest value there. So um, I want you to do more revision on this kind of error. Uh, two errors that is found, that is commonly, uh, two errors that are commonly found in your writing. That is subject verb agreement and the use of past and present participle when you, when you are writing a more complex sentence. Okay, subject verb agreement you have to remember singular subject takes singular verb. Plural subject takes plural verb. Okay, you have to make sure this um, subject verb agreement to uh, subject tallies with the verb and then number two okay this is this is something that you have to be careful of oh, uh, because it 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 is it is it looks like I'm just kecil je tertinggal s for example tertinggal ed for example but if it happens um, repeatedly dia akan distract tau so for example perfect perfect tense you use have and had and then it should follow by past participle past participle, have, had, contohnya had lived, had eaten, for example, had gone. Ah, tapi you guna had going or had, had went, for example, uh, had uh, became, for example. So, um, dia akan jadi distraction dekat situ. So, kalau reader dia confuse, what kind of tense are you using there? Uh, and then perfect continuous tense, same. Kalau you guna has, had, been. So must followed by present participle yang ada ing tu. Alright. And then passive voice. Uh, another one. If you use passive voice, make sure that you know the past participle form of the verb. Uh, macam tadi tu lah yang has have, has have uh, untuk perfect tense tu tadi. So for example, you want to say um, the, the action was taken. Action should be taken. Uh, ex, uh, uh, sorry, action was taken. So action was taken. Bukan was took ataupun was taking. Uh, macam tu ya. Yeah? So make sure that you know uh, verb, verb uh, macam mana nak form nak, nak agent verb ni bila you guna this kind of uh, verb auxiliary verb tu tadi has, have, uh, be verb tu tadi. Okay. So do some revision on this. Okay, I have actually provide you the handout on uh, subject verb agreement. So I think there are 10 10, um, 10 situations where you should consider using this, uh, where, should, where you should consider the use of verbs uh, with the subjects. Okay. Next, holding your reader's attention effectively is when you establish your purpose of communication to clearly. Macam tadi tu kan, remember that we study the questions before. So you have to know that what is the purpose of you writing the article? What is the purpose of writing the article? Is it to inform? Is it to suggest ways? Is it to uh, give opinion? State it in your paragraph. Okay, tak salah kalau you nak guna ayat. There are multiple ways to fix the problem. It sound like macam uh, biasa sangat guna ayat ni. Okay, you can turn it into question just now. Macam tadi tu kan. What can you, or what are the ways to uh, overcome the problem. So kalau you rasa macam uh, typical sangat nak buat something extra, uh, okay you can you can uh, always uh, play with the language but make sure your um, purpose of communication too is well established, clear. Reader boleh tahu okay this is go this is what you are going to tell about in your paragraph. Okay kalau to suggest way, there are multiple ways to fix a problem. In order to keep the environment clear, we should blah 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 macam tu. Okay and then another one is to explain benefits. Okay, by enforcing stricter laws on the unruly literates, it can surely curb the literary issues. Okay, to explain benefits. So, uh, the word, <coughs> the, the sentence, it can surely curb the literary issues. So, the, um, there is the benefit there. To give opinion, to give opinion, use the sentence opener that I believe that to combat this or in my opinion uh, or uh, from my perspective, uh, use that kind of uh, sentence openness to signal, to, to signal that you are uh, going to tell this in your paragraph, in your sentence, okay? All right, last one. Okay, last one, this is, uh, I think this is the real game, cha game changer. 
in your writing if you're able to use this then i think inshallah you will be uh, able to achieve um, five in uh, five for language in your standard writing okay so how to write complex sentence um, easily uh, okay by using reflective pronouns okay. how to use reflective pronouns <coughs> what is the use of re reflective pronouns so the common reflective pronouns that we use is usually which that who uh, kita selalu guna yang ni je which where uh, which that who okay so the the function of um this reflective pronoun is to actually to give a definition uh, to give a definition of the subject so you tengah cerita pasal littering tadi kan and then um, you cerita pasal littering uh, and then um, you provide what is littering oh sorry what is the what is the chemical you did kan cerita pasal littering and then you, you relate with the chemicals that uh, that is in the litter and you want to provide a definition of what is the chemical chemical inside what is the chemical in the litters you use which, which are known to be harmful to the aquatic life, will be released into the water as they degrade. So what is the effect of using uh, reflective pronoun ni? So dia bagi, uh, it helps your reader to understand about the subject. Uh, and then dia tak choppy, your sentence tu tak separuh-separuh. Instead of saying like, um, the letters contain harmful chemicals. Uh, and these harmful chemicals will be released as they degrade. So you pecahkan ayat tu kan? Okay, instead of you pecahkan ayat tu and it sound uh, choppy, putus-putus, you can connect the sentence to uh, using reflective pronouns. Okay? So there are the effect dekat situ. And then the second one is use if conditional. If you think that uh, you think that your you have different ideas, you're thinking from different angle. Uh, kita buat macam ni, jadi macam ni. But if you do like this, dia akan jadi macam ni. Use if conditionals. Uh, if littering continues, it will cause harm. Not only to the human beings, but also to the environment. Dia uh, provide perspective dekat situ. So you are thinking uh, another angle dekat situ. And then uh, using by or with sentence opener. Uh, by or with sentence opener and this is usually used when you want to tell uh, the effect or the benefits of the action taken. Uh, so macam ayat ni, by enforcing or with stricter laws, by enforcing stricter laws on the unruly literates, it can surely curb the literary issues. Uh, okay, next and uh, the last one is by using subordinating conjunction. Macam macam tadi lah, subordinating conjunctions are, are, are who is the tadi. Okay, so you can Google this. I actually, I have provided you with the handout telling you what is a uh, 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 tadi, eh? uh, So A S N uh, W is while uh, you until before. Okay. And then um, some notes on less common lexis. Uh, less common lexis. So um, do some revision on um, what are other words that you can use uh, to that you can use precisely in your essay to call, uh, to to replace the words that you usually use uh, macam kita selalu guna solutions kan uh, what if what uh, what if you use overcome kalau kita tak sorry kalau kita nak cerita pasal solution kita selalu cerita pasal uh, we usually use overcome what if kalau kita guna curb pula or get rid of or ban or stop Okay, or mitigate, for example. Okay, telling cost, for example. Telling cost, uh, you may use contributes to or leads to. Kita selalu guna affect, right? Uh, so what if kalau you can use contributes to facilitate. So but use precisely. Okay. And then um, verb that you use to describe process. Uh, process, for example, you not, you want um, authorities to take action, for example. Restrict, enforce. Or you want educate, nurture, inspire, okay? 
so do some studies on this. I think there are, uh, I think you can search on Google on synonyms of words. Okay, but make sure uh, you refer to your teacher if you're not sure what does the words, if you're not sure whether the words is uh, suitable with the context or not. Yeah? Okay. And then um, nouns, nouns, it depends on the context. Okay, make sure that you know, you have certain knowledge. You have certain knowledge on um, the contextual vocabulary that relates to the topic. Kalau you cerita pasal environment, make sure you know about pollution. Make sure you know about um, extinction. You Make sure you know how to use the word um, reserve, preserve, uh, recycle, reuse. Uh, jangan tertukar-tukar pula. And then, uh, for example, if we are you, if you are talking about health, selalu kita tertukar berkaitan disease, disease, illness, outbreak, um, and then play, for example. So, um, all these kind of words, has its precise use sebenarnya. Uh, so study, uh, uh, you can study about it. Yeah? And then adjectives, okay, instead of using high, uh, adjective that that is long in a sentence, like macam, uh, instead of a place with high population, for example, like, I am living, so you, if you are living in a place with high population, what if, kalau why not you replace high population with highly populated area? or place or densely populated area or place. Yeah, this is what we call compound adjective. And usually compound adjective ni dia akan mula dengan perkataan well, highly, uh, well, highly, and then, um, okay, you can, you can do research lah on the, on the internet. Widely, uh, for example. Okay. Uh, so adverbs and also idiomatic expressions. Uh, but, but you have to remember two things. You have to use it precisely, but do not overuse it. Uh, use suitable to the context. Okay. You have more time? Okay. So far so good ke? Yes, teacher. Yes, yes eh? Okay. Alright. Last one. Jadi dah last kasi ni. But this is the last one lah. Yeah. <laughs> um, extra tips, getting readers' attention. Okay. Remember that other than you make sure that your essay just now is free from errors and serve the communicative purpose, um, you can also use attention grabber. Why? Why I put this last? Because this is actually extra lah, eh? extra. If you can, you you are not, you it is not mandatory to use. Tapi if you want some extra, you want an impression, an added impression, you you may use. Yang penting dua tu tadi. You have to make sure that it is free. Uh, you you have to juggle your error and you have to make sure that it serve your communicative purpose. Yang ini later on, you can add on. Okay, so attention grabber. It can comes in three, three, three elements lah. Okay, whether it is in your title, okay, you can um, not change title, use the title and make sure the title reflects the topic. So for example, tadi kita bincang, we, you are going to discuss about littering problems and there are many, many other, there are many other things also, okay. So maybe you can um, try to create a catchy title that says literary problem, uh, colon, titik bertindih tu, littering problem, titik bertindih. Uh, what can we do about it, for example? Uh, bagi question pula. So, your reader, dia akan, uh, oh, tertarik nak baca. We'll, we'll be attracted to read your essay. Uh, we'll be attracted to read your, your, your article. Okay, for example, you are, the main idea you are going to tell is uh, ways to, uh, ways to handle stress, for example. So, five steps to handle stress. Ha, macam tu. So, by having this catchy title, it adds, it adds interest value sebenarnya. This is how you add interest value uh, in your writing. Okay, next, use shocking or trivia facts. Okay, remember we did uh, trivia facts uh, uh, earlier tadi. So, trivia facts ni is actually facts that uh, many people might not be aware of. Uh, you 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 are telling them something that, oh, orang tak tahu, I je tahu ha, macam tu kan. Uh, so, try masukkan dalam any parts of your essay. Tapi janganlah, but don't use setiap paragraph nak ada soalan, setiap ayat nak ada soalan, nanti jadi soalan semua. Okay, 
use effectively macam tadi tu uh, you um uh, just now we are talking about turtle tu kan so uh, you dah cerita pasal toxic chemical so and then you pop up oh uh, tu Mas, bawa masuk cerita pasal turtle. So then reader bar, reader tadi dia mungkin dah agak lalok-lalok baca first paragraph first first sentence tu so, bila dia baca fact about si turtle tu dia shocking. Ada shock. Uh, so dia akan continue to read. Okay. Next is rhetorical question. Rhetorical question is a question that provokes the reader to think further. Macam tadi dia isn't this isn't this bad? Isn't that bad? Uh, so that is rhetorical question. Uh, okay. So this is how you engage your uh, reader. Yeah. Right. Um, it's actually I hope to hear from you, um, to hear from you on title, okay, on um, some uh, on introduction and conclusion. But I don't think we have a lot of time here. We don't have we don't have much time. Um, I want to proceed to sample answers. Okay, I want to proceed to sample answers. If we have more time, uh, we can we can go back to this and maybe we can um, I can elicit some of your response on catchy title that you might want to use or, and then how I want to see how do you create craft your intro and conclusion. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at this sample answer. Uh, Little problems written by No Sophia. Okay. The introduction: guiltless people. Well, little because they believe that someone like a responsible neighbor or a maintenance worker will pick up the trash after them. The more they litter, the more it becomes a habit to the point that they care less for the danger littering has um, to the people. Okay, um, can someone tell me, uh, can someone give a feedback? Rasa-rasa cik introduction ni uh, okay tak? Okay, or any other, or or if you can spot any error ke, or you think um, there might, that it could, something could be done, something something better could be done ke? Get less people later because they believe that someone like a responsible neighbor or a maintenance worker will pick up the trash after them. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, okay, so let's go through, yeah. Guiltless people later because they believe that someone like a responsible neighbor or a maintenance worker will pick up the trash after them. Okay, I, this is a good introduction. Uh, this is a good introduction. And actually this is a fairly straightforward introduction. Dia sebenarnya dah jawab dah soalan reason tu tadi. Dia terus jawab soalan reason tu tadi. But actually, um, you can actually... Um, Insert more background knowledge about literary. Maybe you can provide a definition of literary, literary or maybe you can insert some facts about littering that you might know uh, or you might see around you. Uh, okay, so dia dah macam spoiler sikit kat sini sebenarnya tapi tak apa, it's okay. Uh, it is still uh, acceptable. So guiltless people litter because they believe that someone like a responsible or a maintenance worker will pick up. Okay, good. Uh, the the only thing is maintenance worker here lah. Maintenance worker here. And it can be replaced by um, trash or rubbish collector. Uh, okay. Ni vocabulary lah. Rubbish. Oh, sorry lah. I tulis pakai mouse. Okay. Okay. Um, the more they litter, the more it becomes a habit. To the point that they can last. For the late four, yeah, okay, less about, about, about the danger, the danger literally has to be Okay, there is an attempt, actually there is an attempt here to use complex sentence, yeah, to the point you explain, as they're going to the point, but simply can add a comma. It becomes a habit, pause, to the point that it can less um, about the danger literally has to the people. Okay, so far, good, okay. This introduction uh, fairly straightforward. So the strength is, uh, I would say that this is a fairly straightforward introduction. Uh, well structured, complex sentence. The fact is achieved. Uh, they are the show 
cause and effect dekat situ the more they litter the more it becomes habit. Ha dia guna the more ni the more dia emphasize kat sini. Okay dia emphasize the more they litter the more it becomes a habit. Ha to the point that they care, care less about. So ini effect. Okay ada ada effect. Effect is achieved but uh, dia ada mistake sikit dekat sini ya. Yeah? Right. What can be done? to improve. So missing this system. So um, introduction, it is very important that in, in introduction um, you should have a thesis statement. Thesis statement ni is a rough, uh, is a brief statement of what you are going to talk about in your in your next three or four paragraph. What is it going to be about? Okay, so you can state like, um, so what are the, what are the possible what are the possible what are the possible effects and solutions can be done uh, so solutions can be taken for example uh, so you create a thesis statement so that uh, your your reader there uh, dia tak tergantung uh, tak tergantung ya eh? okay and then followed by pollution is one of the main problems triggered by um, littering okay good pollution is one of the main problems Ha, ni selalu yang uh, student akan student akan tertinggal ni problems ni. Ha, tapi ini okay, tak masalah. So pollution is one of the main problems triggered by littering. There are water pollution, soil, soil pollution and air pollution. Okay. What harm does littering do to human? Actually we used to use human beings. Uh, human beings tau. Sorry. human beings. Okay. Researchers estimate that more than 40%, yeah, 40 rapat of the world's litter is burned in the open air which can release toxic emissions that can lead to respiratory issues like asthma and bronchitis. Okay. Okay. This, there is a good attempt. There are attempt kat sini to use complex sentence but it is too long. They lose, dah, dah, dah sampai too long, dah, dah lose effect tau kat sini tau. So, uh, what I would do is uh, researchers estimate that more than 40% of the world's litter is burned in the open air. Okay, take kat sini. Tak ada masalah, titik. But we want, we want to emphasize this one particular, uh, apa, particular effect of litter so tadi kan. And then you can continue. This, uh, you can start again with uh, the, the toxic emissions which was, re which is, which is released by the litters can lead to respiratory issues like asthma and bronchitis. Uh, okay, so dia macam, so you nampak lah sikit ada, ada effect dia dekat sini, ada flow. So your reader can, 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 can follow your uh, sentence dekat situ. Okay, so tak semestinya complex sentence tu uh, mesti kena panjang, uh, mesti kena panjang, tak perlu. Uh, it, it, it has to be effective. Tu sebenarnya point dia. Okay, can everyone take part in reducing litter? There are certain ways to solve the issue and one of them is to raise awareness through a campaign or a talk to educate people about the harm of um, littering. Okay. The responsible party, okay, the responsible party here, I would say uh, the authority is good. Uh, sebab dia talk about raise amount of the penalty is usually it's authorities. Uh, this is where your contextual vocabulary tu very important. Ha, kena ada ni. You kena tahu kalau penguat kuasa kita panggil apa eh dalam bahasa Inggeris? Oh authorities. Ha, macam tu. So the authorities can raise the amount of uh, penalty for littering. So people will be wary of littering in public. Okay good. The most important thing. So they make an emphasize here. The most important thing here uh, thing is we have to educate them. Okay, kat sini kita confuse sikit. Uh, we ni siapa? And them ni siapa? Uh, okay, so you have to be careful lah dengan penggunaan pronouns. You have to be careful with the use of pronouns. We and them. Uh, when actually the article is focusing on us, right? Uh, okay, so we have to, we have to have uh, uh, kena ada beza sikit. We tu siapa? Them tu siapa? And maybe you can um, state, state Somewhere here lah. There are certain ways to solve the issue and one of them is to raise awareness through a campaign. Maybe they refer kepada the responsible party ni. Uh, so kita boleh cakap the most important thing is um, is 
oh kita buang je we have kita cakap juga educate educate people from young educate kids uh, then refer to the students in school Okay, uh, maybe but them ni tadi we, it's not clear sebenarnya sebab not not mention anywhere pun be, sebelum ni uh, dekat mana-mana ayat ni. It's just kita tahu people je. Uh, so maybe dia boleh kena bagi tahu dari somewhere uh, you are referring to siapa. Okay, the most important thing is we have to educate um, kids lah. Kita cerita kids ni rasa sebab kids from young age. Uh, especially so or, or educate students. Betul lah tadi. The students from young age. From young age. Okay, especially in school. Okay, kids and teenagers need to normalize keeping their surroundings clean and um, not littering. Okay, ni tak payah pun tak apalah. Kids and teenagers need to normalize keeping their surroundings. Surrounding clean, okay, by macam mana? Ha, telling by apa? Macam mana nak keep the surrounding clean? Maybe by having duty roster stuff apa ke. But this is not going to be conclusion lah. Kalau tak, it cannot be um, the end. Dia mesti ni part of elaboration. So there must be another another sentence yang recap all the things that you have said dalam paragraph tu. Uh, okay. Okay. So I feel that the strength of this paragraph is points is uh, well elaborated. Okay. There is an explanation accompanied by examples. Uh, except for this lah. Dia ada missing sikit kat sini. <coughs> okay, straightforward ideas. Memang straightforward ideas. You can, we can easily answer. Dia tak ada kompleks dia, uh, tak ada complexity of ideas. Uh, straightforward. And uh, there are some less common um, lexis macam penalty. Huh? Penalty then um, wary. Okay. Respiratory issues. Okay. Estimate. This, uh, the, the word is used precisely lah. Alright, but um, I guess not well, are not clearly linked. Other than, other than the use of the most important thing tu tadi, the emphasize tu tadi. And the use of question, maybe um, the, maybe this person can include um, can link us lah. For example, kat sini kan, the responsibility can raise uh, can through a campaign or a talk ni uh, awareness through a awareness for example through a campaign or a talk uh, so also the reason apa okay ni contoh awareness yang kita boleh contoh cara untuk raise awareness uh, okay and then um, other than that is okay then uh, yeah break down sentences to achieve effect uh, itu sebenarnya. Dia, dia, dia should, should break down the sentences to achieve effect. Okay. And use appropriate vocabulary that match the context. That is uh, the authority tu tadi. Uh, that's all. Alright. And the last one is conclusion. Okay. In conclusion, very simple. Let's say who In conclusion, people should all take part to overcome this serious issue in the long run. We have to take accountability and maintain the sustainability of nature. Okay, very straightforward. Actually, they dah recap dah what, what they emphasize, what um, what should people do next after this. Uh, so, uh, base, so, it is better not to ulang balik all the things. You, you find a statement that can emphasize what you have been talking before. Okay, so the strength is very straightforward, compact ideas. Okay, compact ideas. All right, so the overall score. The overall score. Uh, are you wondering? Are you wondering what is the score for this essay? You agak berapa? You agak berapa? Out of 20 lah. Out of 20 my dear Divya. Niat tak? Uh, 17, 18. Okay, nah. 20. Wow, 20 ya. Ah. Ini kalau jadi cikgu ni gembira. You anak, you anak murid ni gembira sangat. Baik tu si. Okay, 16. Syabata 16. Lagi? Seventeen. Oh. Okay. I'll give him a 10. Why did we have 10? 
17. Okay, okay. Pernah kita tengok. Alright. So, this is the overall score. Eh? Okay, so looking at the content. Tadi kita ingat tak? Content must be fully achieved. Yeah, must be, sorry, must be, um, your target reader must full must be fully informed. Okay, when you are reading the essay and when you relate to the question before, um, there, there is actually a, a missing, a minor omission lah we say because the, the, the question asks you to provide problems. Okay, problems. But actually the, the this person only provide one problem. Huh? One problem. Pollution is one of the main problem. Satu problem tu dia dah letak kat situ. So, uh, I would say that Um, it is better to give more than give cukup-cukup. Ha, so ya, yeah, kalau you senang je kalau dia letak one, kalau dia minta one, kalau dia minta one you give one. But kalau dia there is an S ada advantages, disadvantages, or problems, give more. Selamat to be safe. Ha, but I would say but kalau I I bagi dia my omission lah. Ha, I nak dia fulfill. Ha, so I want the, I want this person to fulfill. So um, bagi lebih Okay. And then the CA, Communicative Achievement. Um, this person has used informative tone. Okay, tak ada colloquial, tak ada slang, no slang, uh, tak ada informal tone. The informative tone and neutral. Neutral, yeah. Uh, and then uh, straightforward ideas. Straightforward ideas. And actually you are able to 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 follow the the uh, the, the ideas without without being distracted sangat by the by the errors cuma tadi ada choppy choppy sentence so dia tak boleh full, dia tak boleh full kat sini dia dapat empat je okay organization uh, because um, there is macam uh, there is a gap a gap between ideas tu tadi macam introduction nak pergi next paragraph tu tak ada gap and then um, there is a missing there is macam for example tadi kan tak clear kan I will give three. Okay, text generally were organized, but maybe very, but very few linkers use between clauses to link ideas to today. Okay, and then uh, the last one, language is three. Yeah, there are good control of simple, and there is an attempt. There are attempt tadi kan? Nak, nak guna complex grammatical form tu, tapi apa yang terjadi? Uh, tak achieve the effect, right? Uh, they tak achieve the effect. And then some of the sentence, uh, some of the words pun tadi, Um, not appropriate. Uh, so they bring down the low, they bring down the level, bring down the marks to to three. So kalau kita totalkan semua, empat, empat, lapan, campur enam is fourteen. Uh, gitu. But um, I think uh, but I think this is good. Kalau kita tengok tadi, four, four, three, three tu tadi equivalent to dekat mana tadi? It's between B2 kan? B2 dengan uh, B1, uh, B2 dengan C1. Uh, so you are doing great actually. This is just because the requirement of the task is challenging. Uh, you kena, you kena ada complex sentence, you kena ada less common lexis, you kena ada bombastic vocab, you kena achieve some certain effect. So this takes uh, extra effort tau. Um, ada practice and then takes extra effort. That's why um, You jangan sedih lah kalau tak dapat 5555 tu. Uh, kena practice more. Okay, jangan cakap hati cukup dukul lo. Tak boleh bagulah sikit tak boleh. Uh, dia ada, ada certain um, because we are following the assessment skill. Uh, so, macam tu lah dia. Okay. So. Okay, I think we have uh, uh, question. Uh, question ke? Siti Nur Zulaika, you raise your hand. Uh, uh, any question? You can then turn on your mic, Siti Nozulaika. Or you accidentally raise your hand. <laughs> Now, okay, the yeah. hands down. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, so far, so good. So, if you are wondering what, what, uh, what is the, what is the better version of this article? Uh, I leave this to you. I leave this to you. How can you do better based on my comments just now, based on uh, my, apa, based on uh, what you have learned just now. How can you do, uh, how can you improve this karangan? Uh, macam mana nak improve? Uh, so I leave this to you and then you hantar your essay ni pada your teacher and let your teacher, um, let your teacher comment pula on your article. 
uh, whether you can go uh, lebih dapat lebih tak markah daripada this person okay like divya divya said um, yes Divya would uh, add another point. Okay, yes, add another point in order to achieve that uh, content requirement tu tadi. Good. Improve organization. Uh, yes, improve organization. Yeah, use linkers appropriately. Uh, where 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 possible. Mana possible you, you use, you use. Sebab otherwise, um, dia akan jadi lost lah. Your reader will lost. Will get, will get lost. Jungle. And then uh, add more crazy devices, yes. Add more but make sure it is effective, yeah. Okay, try using less uh, intermediate words, yes, good. Uh, okay, use more, more uh, bombastic words or words that is, that is uh, contextually um, appropriate. Betul-betul kena dengan topik tu. Okay, so it's for... It's four. What's the time? <laughs> nah, it's 4.20. We have another 10 minutes. I'm opening the floor to you actually, my students. If you have any questions, if you have, um, if you want to share your, your, if you are able to, to write a better version, a better version of this karangan while I'm, I am um, teaching you ni. If you want to share, then you can just share. Right. Uh, let me answer question. Teacher, please give a class on vocab and grammar use. Okay, don't worry. Um, it is actually, it is actually uh, grammar and vocab comes along during, during um, your, during, what I call it, during your lesson. Uh, it, you doesn't you you don't have to have a specific class for grammar and vocab. As you go along, you have this is where you uh, this is where you practice your grammar. Practice doing a practice writing and then um, reread, baca balik, and then you will spot the grammar mistakes. So because the problem is when we write, kita selalu tulis, kita hantar dekat cikgu, and cikgu yang check untuk kita. But we never check. We tak tahu pun. But we never aware of of the grammar, of the grammar mistakes that we do. So kita minta tolong orang yang yang check kan. So it is um, actually uh, grammar comes along, comes along during your the, during the learning to the learning process to uh, and uh, uh, as as well as vocab. Kalau you log on to internet, kalau you pergi on internet, you search on um, certain topics for example, kalau you search on, on this topic, littering topics, you will find uh, more words that you can actually, oh this word, I, uh, oh I can actually use this word in, in, in my writing later. Uh, so try search topic like for example, uh, online shopping for example. Uh, apa dia perkataan yang, uh, what are the words that is usually use when uh, talking about online shopping, cash, debit card, uh, cashless, um, what do you call that, pay with, uh, for example. Uh, okay, we, we make ourselves aware of, of um, the, the, the contextual vocabulary around us. Okay, next. Title kalau tak tulis. Okay, sambungan soalan tu apa? Oh, boleh ke? Okay. Title kalau tak tulis boleh ke? Okay. There is no penalty on format. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, kalau, but, kalau you baca essay, kalau you, you, when you read article, tapi tak ada title, ada impression tak dekat reader? No, kan? So, your reader tak tahu what, what is it that you are going to talk about. So, article ni memang lumrah kehidupan ni memang kena ada artikel. Uh, the nature dia ada artikel. So make it into habit nak tulis artikel mesti ada tajuk. Uh, uh, same same goes to review. Sorry same goes to uh, report. Report pun kena ada title. Uh, so um, biasakan lah. So tak apa. So tulislah uh, artikel. I would, I would recommend that you you write the title. Okay. First impression is always matter. Yes, first impression is always matter. Ha, that's why lah I ajar you tadi catchy title. You have to catch the reader. Kalau tak nanti reader pun hmm, nak baca ke tak nak. Ha, okay next. How many idiom? Okay how many idiom? We don't go to, we don't go for quantity. We go for suitability. 
Kalau you rasa okay sesuai lah ayat ni I nak letak Punch satu idiom dekat situ Use Okay tapi you you pun sendiri rasa um, uh, If too much idioms If too much idiom nanti orang akan reduce pun dengan You have to reduce you sakit kepala because they have to think of They have to read between the lines pula kan Apa nak cakap ni banyak sangat idioms kan So better one or two is enough and use where necessary. Okay. Nurul Najiha. Okay sorry. Divya. Divya. Chan Yi Shang. Can we go exit the word count? Okay. <clears throat> This is uh, all about time. Okay. Uh, you remember that uh, part you have three parts of questions and uh, this three, this this paper Uh, and you are sitting for this paper for, for one hour and 30 minutes. Okay, you have to be wise in managing your time. Okay, if you think that you have more, uh, you think you have more time to elaborate more on your writing, it should not be a problem. Uh, it should not be a problem. Tapi janganlah tulis sampai dua tiga muka surat panjang-panjang macam tu. Okay, because it is sort of macam guided juga. Dia dah ada isi kat situ. And um, you just have to talk around the uh, The round the content from around the prompt tu je. I uh, don't have to elaborate sangat-sangat. Uh, but make sure it is compact. Make sure it is kalau short, the compact, nice untuk baca. It has all the information and deeds. So orang boleh buat orang boleh. Okay, dia macam dah sufficient, uh, sufficient, sufficiently informative. Uh, yang penting sufficiently informative. Tak perlu panjang-panjang, but but uh, Reduce loss. Uh, kita nak macam tu. Kita nak quality tu yang penting. Okay. Uh, so stick to three to uh, five paragraph. I think three to five, three to five paragraph will go around um, 200, 250 or maybe exit like 280 words. So don't have to go like um, two pages, three pages. Okay. Lagi? Any more question Nurul Najiha? You are raising your hand. If you can turn your mic, turn your mic on. Okay, hilang. Selalu macam tu. Okay, any more question? Hmm? Any question that I left? Yes, Pak Vitre? So, uh, can give uh, some tips to write an essay? Some tips on to write an essay? Yes. Okay. This bring you to this lah. These two on the takeaways. Okay. Read the questions carefully and thoroughly. Study the questions. By by studying means study, you highlight all the um, important things. Yang tadi I, I mentioned just now, you have, bila you dapat questions, Take a highlighter and then highlight the important deeds that you have to improve, uh, include in your um, article. Uh, such as the title, the writing genre, the target audience, the key points. Uh, okay. And then, um, tak ada benda yang datang bergolik dalam dunia ni. So you have to practice makes, because you have to practice because it makes perfect. Uh, practice makes perfect. Okay, uh, try to read some samples and then maybe um, with the with the sample, kita tak tiru sample tu, kita tak nak tiru sample tu because we don't want a rehearsed script. Kita tak nak rehearsed script. We want an original idea. We want your style. Uh, kalau buku dia ada style lain. Uh, we want your style because this CFR is all about what you can do. Uh, what what you you can show to us. Uh, so you show what is uh, what what you can do. Okay, uh, so um, when you read sample, try to think, oh what can I do better? Kalau dalam buku mungkin tak ada direct questions tu tadi kan? Okay, uh, what if kalau I put the questions here, masuk tak? Okay tak? Uh, so practice make perfect and then uh, regularly have your teacher check your essay. Uh, so insyaAllah you will you will improve. Okay? Madam can Sakina can add something? Yeah, sure, sure, make sure, Miss Nisa. Ah, uh, okay. Um, in order for you to write better, it's always like what Madam Sakina said is to practice. 
kid, if you're too shy to ask your teacher to write your uh, essay, or to be confident lagi, you can get your peers to edit. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yes. Yeah, your friends to edit first, and then you can discuss and uh, ask your friends to give comments towards each other's essay. Mm-hmm. And then remember to always practice life because you don't study English, you use English. If you use English in your life, and then when you write, the ideas and the language will flow through from your brain to to the pen to the paper mm. uh, dengan senang dengan lancar je. You can read a lot of samples in some of them like in Africa. Itu I punya experience lah. Correct. <laughs> Correct because just now, it happened to be just now, my my little brother who is, who is just, who is now studying in um, UITM ask me about, uh, ask me a question and she said that uh, sorry, he, he said that this lecturer, uh, his lecturer was complaining that some of the students, some of, of his friends do not know subject verb agreement. Okay, so when, when, I, when I heard that, I think that most probably because most of us think that when you finish SPM, uh, the habis form 5, all gone. Uh, so English is something that we use. You will use it until you tua pun. Uh, so do not stop. So it, it is important that you have the, it is important that you practice. Uh, practice. Okay? Okay, Pavitra, can you can use highlighter in exam? Okay. Um, highlighter is only to, is only, can only be used in question paper when you make notes on question paper. But do not, do not use in your um, script, script, script in your ruang jawapan tu. Ha, jangan guna dalam ruang jawapan tu ya. Answer sheets. Thank you Vivian, answer sheet. Okay. You can, you can only use highlighter in questions but not in your answer sheet. And it is also, it is also advisable for you to use ball pen. Ha, jangan guna ink pen. Guna ball pen. Uh, because ball pen ni the less risk of getting hilang or um, kembang bila kena air kan. Uh, okay. Uh, so use ball pens. Black or white doesn't matter. Uh, black or white, sorry. Black or blue. <laughs> okay, any other question? 